Hello, my beautiful co-creators. Lilu here. I'm in Ashland, Oregon with magnificent Linda Francis that is the spiritual partner of Gary Zukav. And we're here in their beautiful garden next to the waterfall on this beautiful spring day. Mm -hmm. So good to be with you. And I just welcome all of you um, to listen in on our talk. I'm so excited to be with Lilu again. Yes. Yeah, so good to be we with you. We met several months ago over in California, and here we are now. We did, we <laughs> did. It was so great to be with you then. I wasn't aware of what you were doing until that time, and I'm really excited to hear what you're doing on the Internet and letting pe sharing with people Thank the things you. that are most important. Yes. And um, with many people. And so everyone gets to share about, and I understand that you're having people send you videos too. Yeah. I love that. Well, there's a lot. It's this beautiful exchange. And uh, now it, it's really the Juicy Living Tour is actually growing exponentially yeah. to millions of views. And, and it's wonderful to see this exchange and how much good news and good juiciness, great things are happening in the world for all of us. Absolutely. There's really great news. There is great news. Absolutely. <laughs> Despite what we hear on the news, yeah. <laughs> the news on the TV, yeah. there's great news happening. Absolutely. And Linda is going to take more and more of her iPhone and start sharing more Indeed. and more of all these beautiful happenings. Indeed. Well, I've, I've felt that way for a long time, but now you've given me some inspiration to be using my <laughs> iPhone when I have conversations with people because yeah. I always have these really deep and wonderful conversations because many of the people that I am in conversation with are striving to be in spiritual partnership mm -hmm. and that is such an exciting way of being in the world it's mm -hmm. so different than a friendship yes. so different than a relationship that um, people are avoiding talking about what's really important in the relationship because they know that if they do they don't know what will happen mm -hmm. but for me that's the most important thing that I, I can do is to be in my integrity in my relationships mm -hmm. and it started out with um, being in my integrity with Gary yes so when I met him, I had read The Seat of the Soul. I'd actually read The Dancing Wooly Masters. But then when I read The Seat of the Soul, I realized that what was in that book I knew was true. I didn't know how to live that way. So I began to live that way. Mm. I began to practice that in my life. It wasn't easy. Yeah. It's not been easy, but it's a lot more easy than it was at the beginning. Yeah. It's a lot easier now. So let's talk about that because it's really an important topic, really creating spiritual partnership inside of an intimate relation, instead, uh, in, inside of a couple mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. So how does, how does that work? How is the every day-to-day -day with Gary? <laughs> the every day-to-day -day with Gary. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the most important thing for me is that I'm always um, looking at myself. You know, I'm always looking at if I feel judgmental or if I feel like I'm in a power struggle, I know that has to do with me and what's going on in me. It doesn't have to do with Gary. No matter what he's doing or not doing, it's not about him. Mm. So the focus is on myself. The mm -hmm. focus is always looking at me and changing that and also being a kind of partner who wants to support Gary in his growth and all my spiritual partners. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's my grandchildren or some friends who I I'm really in spiritual partnership with, I'm always wanting to do that. I'm always wanting to support them in something that I may see that they may not see in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I want them to do the same with me. Mm. So it's really exciting. And I do the same with Gary, and we, we do that together. So how do you communicate? How can you actually, in, this, in, this, in, in a couple, share really what's going on coming I guess we're dealing with ourselves, so it's more sharing what's going on with ourselves than exposing that to the other person? Or? Well, sometimes it is. I mean, it's really my responsibility to ch challenge and change the things in me. Yeah. But sometimes I may want to say something. I'll, I'll give you an example. When we were together, um, you know, for a short time, I uh, realized that I had a lot of, I had, had, had a lot of jealousy. I'll call them frightened parts of my personality, parts of my personality that felt jealous about a lot of things, but particularly when I was in a relationship with a man, I would always be worried that all the women around were uh, might be more attractive and I would be watching out to see what yeah. was going on yeah. with other women mm -hmm. so that I could make sure that my partner wouldn't be interested in them and steer him a different way if we were at a party or you yeah. know, just constantly. It was I think a lot of us can thing. relate to that. Well, constant <laughs> thing, you know. <clears throat> so when, I, when Gary and I got together, I realized that, of course, that part hadn't gone away just because I 
chose to be in a spiritual partnership. In fact, I didn't know before that it was even a part. I just thought it was, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. I'm a person who feels jealousy because I have a right to. I feel jealousy because my partner creates that in me. Uh -huh. You know, my partner's in the past. Yeah. And so when I realized that that's not true and that it was actually a part of me, I began to challenge it. So I would notice it. I would notice that I would start having, I'd feel pain in my body. I'd notice that I'd have all these thoughts, judgmental thoughts, uh, wondering, is he interested in her? I think he's interested in her. I'm, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, he's probably going to not want to be with me anymore. Just thoughts, yeah. you know, just lots of thoughts. And a perspective of really wanting to pull away yeah. and getting angry. Mm -hmm. And just all this, um, just this whole thing of jealousy, this whole part and part that had its own agenda, its own story about whenever it was activated, when I thought something was going, when it thought something was going on. Yeah. So for me, at the beginning, I, I really did talk to Gary about it because I knew that I did not want this running my life anymore. So if something like that would come up, I would say to him, I can feel this part of me that feels jealous. I don't know if, what's going on. I don't think it really has anything to do with you at all. But I want to tell you this because I'm challenging it right now. And even though I want to feel distance from you and I want to be angry with you, I, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Beautiful. So I would do that. And then when it would come up later, I wouldn't even need to say anything to him. I would just see it, notice it, challenge it, not let it affect me, feel the pain of it, mm -hmm. and do just go up and connect to Gary. Or if I'd see a woman who I thought I, I was jealous, I'd go up and talk to her and mm -hmm. say, hi, how are you? Because I didn't want to create distance with anyone. Yeah, because we shut down otherwise yes, in that that's moment. that's right. That's right. Because these frightened parts of the personality, are that's all they're interested in. They're yeah. not interested in, in connection. They're interested in feeling the way they feel and being right about it. And mm -hmm. I, I don't want to live my life that way anymore. I spent much of my life like that in many different situations, not just jealousy, but many other things. Yeah. Yes. And it's interesting how we do that exactly in all kind of different... It's kind of a sabotage. Yeah. So yeah. those frightened, uh, uh, frightened places, so how do you say it? I say frightened aspects, frightened parts of the personality. Those frightened so parts are there to challenge us and to separate us. So it's, is it, they're is it, there to um, get what they want. <laughs> kind of and like the my, ego. And it's my job. Well, some people call it ego, and you could call it ego, but I like to be more specific because it helps me to really get specific about a particular part of my personality. Rather than just generalizing it as ego, mm -hmm. I like to say a, a frightened part of my personality that's jealous, or, or a frightened part of my personality that's sad, mm -hmm. or a frightened part of my personality that's angry. Because I, I can, then I can begin to know where it is in my body because I can feel it. Mm -hmm. it. It's different. When I feel jealousy, I feel it differently than when I feel anger or when I feel sadness. Mm -hmm. or, you know, so I want to know specifically what um, sensations are in my body at that time. I also listen to its thoughts, not so that I want to believe them. I listen to them from a more detached perspective uh -huh. so that I can see, oh, that's a frightened part of my personality. This is not loving. This is not a loving part of my personality. And I'm, I'm not going to let the frightened parts take over. And I don't mean they don't ever, because sometimes they do. Sometimes I get caught in them and think that it's true. It feels true. I think it's true. It's so real, yeah. But then I have spiritual partners. I, I sit down and meditate. I do whatever I need to do to, to center myself again, to challenge this part of me so that I can begin... Again, it. sharing in a loving way and being in a loving way and most of acting us, from a loving part of my personality. Yeah, mo most of us do something to numb ourselves about that, whether it's yes. through alcohol distract. or, or food or, yes. you know, or and we distract ourselves or even cutting those relationships. Yes, when it making, them wrong, and, and, making yeah. them wrong and saying it's their fault. Yeah. And then going on to the next one who is going to be the savior. But it doesn't happen that way. You know, it may, there may be a time in a relationship where you know that it's not, not the right person to be with right now. Yeah. But it's not because um, they're wrong. It's because you know that that's not really where you're supposed to be. Yeah. But if you're, if you're doing that so you can go on to another relationship, that usually doesn't work. Mm -mm. You're bringing it, it, it doesn't mean that it can't. It mm -hmm. can sometimes, but usually it's more like when... The last, the last relationship I had before I met Gary, 
I, it was an amazing experience for me because um, this person, I had actually been spent a lot of time on my own. I decided I didn't want to have a relationship for a long time. Uh, I, I wanted to really spend some time alone and see what that felt like because I'd always been in relationships, always. And I just wanted some time, so I spent many, you know, probably seven years without a relationship so that I could really feel the experience of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I, I was feeling really great about myself. And then I met this person at a spiritual retreat, and I thought, oh, he's the one. Mm -hmm. He's really going to be this great person for me to you know, to be with. Uh, I just, I felt such excitement about it. Well, what I didn't know is that there were lots of frightened parts of my personality that were very excited about meeting this person. And um, actually, uh, I was, because I was so excited about him, I didn't see him for who he was. Or I didn't look at his frightened parts. I didn't notice what was really going on in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, about a year and a half later, I found out that he was actually engaged to someone else. At the same time, I thought I was in a monogamous, wonderful, spiritual relationship with someone. And it was the most shocking news. And I was in so much pain mm. that I decided that this time, I really felt I did not want to miss this opportunity. There, was th there were things that I wasn't seeing that I didn't see. I wanted to see them. So I let myself experience the pain. Mm -hmm. It was quite painful. But I was determined not to make him wrong for that. Because I knew that he had frightened parts of his personality that were acting out that way. Mm -hmm. And he, so he was doing what he always did because his frightened parts controlled him. Mm -hmm. he, had, he wanted to be in that relationship too, and another one, and who knows how I have no idea. I don't really care about mm -hmm. that part. But, but for me, it was um, a matter of me looking at myself and seeing, wow, he's teaching me about me. I wonder how many times I have said things that haven't been real, to people. I wonder how many times I haven't been honest. I wonder how many times I haven't been in my integrity. I wonder, you know, how many times I have other people have felt that way about me. Because I so I started looking at myself mm -hmm. and feeling this pain. And I was so grateful because I realized he was teaching me about what was inside of me. Things that were inside frightened parts of my personality that I didn't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to look at. I never when I think of myself as a person who could do something that would hurt someone. Mm -hmm. But I was so grateful because mm -hmm. I could see it so clearly that, oh, he's really teaching me about myself, really teaching me about parts of me that I did not want to see, that I had to have someone come into my life to show me so clearly. Mm -hmm. And I had been shown that many, many years before, but yeah. I didn't want to see it then either. It's interesting how many times we attract the same type yes. of relationship. Yes, and I thought I was so skillfully not yeah. going to have a relationship like that again. Yeah, but until you really went there. But the universe allowed me to have that relationship so that I could learn if I wanted to this time. Yeah. I could wait another lifetime or another, you know, decade. But I didn't want to do that. I really wanted to use this as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was so beautiful about it is that I was able to end that relationship in a way of really, I felt love for him. And I, I told him, I said, I really love you, soul to soul, but I don't want to be around you anymore because I feel that there are parts of you that you are not able to control. And I want to um, uh, live a different kind of a life. I can't trust that you won't do that mm. because I don't think that you're able to do that right now. But and we left, you know, I, I left in, in a, just a beautiful way because I knew I had no distance from him. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because of that ability, my, my um, I'd say, courage to feel that pain instead yeah. of try to distract myself or make him wrong like I'd done before. Uh, it's all his fault and I'm a victim and the story that I had for years and years after I got divorced many years ago when I was quite young. I had such a story, but... It really didn't help me. No. Because I just, I didn't learn about myself. Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking it's out there. It's not me, but it was definitely me. So 
when I was able to do that, I could see, oh, I could actually have a healthy relationship now. I didn't know if it would happen, and it was okay if it didn't. I didn't mm. mind whether it did or not. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. But what really mattered is that I knew it would be possible to begin to have a healthy relationship mm -hmm. because I was willing to look at myself for the first time really clearly mm. instead of um, trying to look outside for yeah. a savior or blaming someone. And the healing can take place really fast too in that it can, it when, can when, when we have such a conscious it can way of looking at it. Fast. It can happen very fast. We don't need to dwell with that pain no. for years. It's the no, opposite no, actually. No, no, no. It isn't. It is, it's, you, if you're willing to feel that intense pain, it doesn't have to happen for a long time. And I actually, I was feeling all that pain and I actually saw him. The ne he didn't know that I knew any of this. He didn't know any of this was going on. Uh -huh. And I actually saw him, I believe, the next day, or the day after, after all this had happened inside of me. And I, I heard him drive up in my driveway. I remember thinking, okay, universe, I know you're not going to give me more than I can handle. Mm. So I just knew, I trusted. Mm -hmm. And I was able to just end uh, such a, in such a beautiful way with him, really a loving way. Even though I knew he didn't understand completely what I was talking about, because he was involved in these parts of his personality that were probably addicted to sex, mm -hmm. not really loving anyone, because that's not a loving thing to do, to mm -hmm. have multiple partners and not share with the other partners that what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That that's, comes from fear, not from love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Amazing. I know. What would you recommend, though, for somebody that is already in a relationship for many, many years, and oh. all of a sudden they feel that they're not at that authentic place with their partner? Um, there is a whole layer of themselves that is just awakening and they really want yeah. to be truthful yeah. and open up this and they're still happy with their partner but they yeah. haven't really reached a real level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Should it be even with the family members, even with well, daughters that, that and happens sons? All, that happens all the time. I mean, there are so, I mean how, so many people are in relationships that they've been in for either five years or ten years or fifty years and they yeah. never knew there was another way of being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think it's it's really um, giving forgiving yourself for not you know knowing that you didn't know mm -hmm. you did not know that you could do it differently. And so just like completely letting yourself off the hook that you don't have the relationship that you want, and then beginning to do your deep work on yourself. You know that's really the work where it begins. You start doing your work. In other words, well, on our website, the Spiritual Partnership Guidelines, people can download them, and you can begin to study those. Yeah. You know, begin to study what it is in those guidelines that can support you. And you might want to take one at a time. Uh -huh. You know, just begin to see, well, what does this really mean? What does it mean to have a commitment to my spiritual growth? Yeah. I mean, when, I, when I contemplated that for a while, I actually was contemplating something different. I was contemplating... Um, about being committed in a relationship with Gary many years ago now. Um, and when I contemplated that word and I just kept opening to my intuition, what I found was so interesting. I found that it wasn't the commitment to my relationship with Gary. It was that really deep commitment to my relationship with myself, to really growing spiritually and having that be my highest priority. Mm -hmm. And once I made that commitment, and sometimes it happens in layers, mm -hmm. but I, I just really wanted that. I wanted to understand commitment. And so I, and that, that's the first section of the guidelines, mm. is commitment, committing, having your spiritual growth be your highest priority. So it might take a while. You might want to just take that one word and what it means mm -hmm. and see what it means for you mm -hmm. experientially, what it means to keep opening to your dreams and to your intuition. It's not something that has to happen quickly. You don't have to do everything all at once. It's something that you can just begin to ask for support mm -hmm. from other people. You can ask, ask other people to help you to see things you're not seeing that you would really want to see. You can tell, start telling your friends or your partner. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there are things in me that I've been doing for a long time that are based in fear. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel it. I feel like I yell at you. We're in power struggles together. And I, I, I want to take responsibility for that now. I don't want to blame you anymore. And I don't know exactly how to do it, but I know it's possible. And so I, 
could you help me when that happens? When you see that happening, when you see anything happening, where you think that it might be coming from fear rather than love, could you help me with that? Mm. So you can begin to engage your partner and your friends and your children, your grandchildren, and ask them to help you mm -hmm. and support you. So it's really about you learning instead of you trying to try to change your partner. Mm -hmm. It's not about trying to change your partner. It's about you working on yourself mm -hmm. and engaging your family and your partner and other people around you and supporting you in that. And it's possible that many of them will want the same from you. Mm -hmm. And so you'll begin changing your relationships right away mm -hmm. and be, have the possibility of being in a spiritual partnership, which is a partnership between equals for the purpose of spiritual growth. And equals is a very important thing because if I'm experiencing equality mm -hmm. with you, mm -hmm. if I'm experiencing equality, it means that I'm in a loving part of my personality. Mm -hmm. If I'm experiencing inferiority or superiority, in other words, if I'm judging you or if I'm feeling like I'm not good enough to be talking to you or any of that, that means that I have frightened parts of my personality that are active that I may not be aware of. But I'm not feeling equality. Mm -hmm. I'm not experiencing that space of equality. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really good clue that you're in a frightened part of your personality mm. when you don't feel equal. So you can even contemplate that word for mm -hmm. a really long time, mm -hmm. equality, and what that really means. Because sometimes words that we're used to, um, thinking a certain way and that we have a definition for or that people have told us about, it ends up that they're, they're so different. The, the meaning of them is so different from a multi-sensory point of view rather than a five-sensory point of view. Mm -hmm. Like harmony. For instance, harmony. If I, um, when I am in harmony with you, it doesn't mean, oh, Lilo, I just really like you. You're just really wonderful and trying to please you yes. or trying to caretake you or trying to fix you. You know, that's not harmony. It, it seems like harmony sometimes to people when, you know, they... They try to fix things and they make it better. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's harmony, mm -hmm. but it's not really harmony. That's not harmony at all mm -hmm. because harmony is really what you feel inside when you're being your own integrity, mm -hmm. when you're really saying what you need to say. And I don't mean from a place of like uh, having to say everything you feel every moment. I'm not talking about that kind of, you know, it's really right timing too. It's appropriate timing when you say the things that you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a moment to say all those things. There yes. is an appropriate moment where our soul is aligned to, and we can say it from a loving, from a loving place. Exactly. Exactly. Not rushing it, and oh, I have to clear all this up all of a sudden. Well, <laughs> well that's usually a fright. That is a fright part of the personality that feels compulsively mm -hmm. having to handle it all right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I learned about this in the seminar this weekend, and I'm just going <laughs> to say it all. No, no, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's really looking at what is appropriate timing to support someone, but it's really about supporting yourself and learning about yourself mm. and being willing to support your partners if they want that. Now, if they don't want that, that that's pushing something. That's not, that's not creating authentic power. And authentic power is very different from external power. And we haven't talked about that yet in this interview, but I know that Gary spoke about that. Yes, I'm sure. Gary. I'm yes. certain. I didn't hear his interview. Yes, if you I'm haven't certain. seen the interview uh, we just did with I just did with Gary Zukav, I really highly recommend checking that one out. We went truly in depth with uh, spiritual partnership. Oh, great! And loving it. Thank yeah. you so much for this moment, Linda. Oh, it's so good to be with you again. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> excited that we were here together. Yes. Yeah. Thank you and much love, my beautiful co-creators. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.